Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, my dear sister. Thank you for sending in your question. Um, it's actually very much something that I think everyone goes through at some point. Everyone's level of iman will go up and down and we will all face these trials of life. But alhamdulillah, they're all for a good purpose. And there are a number of different reasons why we go through these trials and why our levels of iman go up and down as they seem to be doing for you. So there are a number of um, different reasons why um, people might go through these trials and why their levels of iman go, might go up and down. So there are a number of different things, a uh, number of different ways that we can address this. So like I said, we all go through these various trials to one degree or another. Some people go through greater trials than the other. But it's about how we interpret them that really determines how well we cope with them and how much distress that we experience as a result of these trials that we face. So it's about how we interpret them. So there's, alhamdulillah, there's much that we can learn from Islam that can help provide us with these tools and the best coping strategies to guide us through trials when we face them. So the first thing that we need to note is that Allah tests those that he loves. So if we go back and look at the prophets before us, all of them faced trials um, to a great degree, to be honest, a lot more than what we would go through here in this life. And, what, you know, people are going through great trials today, but the prophets went through trials greater than what we face today. So this is a clear sign that Allah will test those that he loves the most because he loved the prophets more than he loved anyone. And yet he put them through the greatest trials. So that can reassure you that it's a sign of Allah's love going through such trials. But we can also, um, you know, we're calling it love. Um the love of Allah. Why do we call it the love of Allah? Because Allah also says, um, and there's a hadith that says it, that um, going through trials is a source of expiation of sins, that even the prick of a thorn will expiate for some of your sins. So it's a means of puri purification from any sins that you might have committed as well. So it gives you this chance to wipe away any sins that you might have committed without actually facing the punishment for it, be it in this life um, or the next. So how amazing is that, you know, that you go through trials and yet it's a means to purify yourself and, you know, expiate, expiate yourself from any sins that you might have committed. So this really is a sign of love that you don't have to face the punishment for them because the trials that you face are expiating for these sins and also we see numerous examples you know I've, I've just drawn upon a couple of examples there but there are so many different examples in the Quran and in the Hadith to really justify why we face uh, trials in our lives so um, just one particular example that I just want to draw upon because it kind of summarizes everything is that in Surat Al-Ankabut, ayat number two, do, th do people think that on their mere claiming we have attained to faith that they will be left to themselves and will be not put to a test? So that's, you know, just saying that, do, do we think that we'll go through life without being given a test? No, because we have to be given tests because it's a chance to prove our faith to Allah. We'll go through tests because that will give us the chance to prove our, prove our love for Allah, to pr prove our faith in Allah. But if we weren't given these tests, then how can we prove ourselves? How can we prove that we're believers if we're not given these tests and we're not given this opportunity to stay patient in times of trial? So uh, in a nutshell, really, uh, from the Islamic side of things, the cure to feeling the way that you are is to remember Allah. As it says in the Quran in Surah 13, ayah number 28, truly it is in the remembrance of Allah that hearts find peace. So right now it feels like you're not feeling um, at peace. You're, you, you know, you're having these doubts uh, and this is making you feel quite distressed. So the way to find peace in this is to remember Allah. So stay close to Allah. Pray to Allah, fast, make zikr and continue with it. You have to be patient with it. You can't just expect that maybe you do it a day or two, you do it for a week and everything would be better. No, it does take time and it does require patience. But Alhamdulillah, at the end of that, there will be reward with that as well. And also this uh, remembering Allah as well should protect you from these thoughts of doubt as well. Because as you get closer to Allah, you get further from shaitan, you're protecting yourself from doubts because you're so close to Allah that you truly believe that the reason why you're going through these trials, the reason why you're um, fluctuating in your iman um, is to, you can overcome it by being, being closer to Allah. So this is, you know, a general, uh, 
quote that we can take from the Quran that will help you to um, find peace um, with Islam, find peace uh, with Allah by remembering him often so that you won't be having these doubts anymore. But on the other hand as well, you can also tackle it from another side, engage in meaningful activities as well, um, rather than being kind of caught up in this negativity, having these doubts, being so focused on these doubts, do other things as well. Engage in meaningful activities, make sure to exercise, spend time with friends, do the things that you enjoy, do things that will help to boost your mood as well, because otherwise you end up stuck in this circle going round and round having these doubts. Do other things as well that you find exciting, that make you happy as well. And also, especially given that you're having these feelings of doubt, you might also consider signing up to online classes in Islam as well, learning more about your deen, whether they be locally or online. There are plenty of online resources as well, um, online courses that you can take part in online as well, um, especially um, within a group, either online or, you know, locally, ideal, ideally, um, because then you can ask questions of other people as well. You can seek this clarification especially since it seems that you are coming across things that seem to be opposing to Islam. And yes, you do read these things that do seem to oppose Islam. And sometimes they come from inauthentic sources, but obviously uh, you'd need to be with people in order to confirm that. But sometimes they are from authentic sources and it might seem that they're opposing Islam, but what you have to do is read deeper into it and get clarification on the background um, behind what you are reading and actually you find out that these uh, issues actually have more rational explanations but you won't get this except if you study more and ask questions of people who um, are studying Islam as well who are more knowledgeable so this is why it would be very useful uh, in your situation to um, study Islam more uh, from authentic sources and especially in a group where you can ask questions as well um, to clarify and in addition to that it will help you to make friends with other sisters as well and build these bonds that will also help to strengthen your love of Islam as well and kind of throw those doubts away. So overall, if you can take these things into account from the Islamic perspective, as well as doing other things that you enjoy as well, then inshallah, you should be able to uh, see your way forward. May Allah guide you forward with this and guide you on the straight path and strengthen you during these testing times. <laughs>